Hello, friends. We've been learning about clocks and telling time. This week, we're investigating the connection between clocks and counting by fives. When you're thinking about the minutes, as shown on an analog clock, that's this kind, we think about the minutes in groups of five. Each number on the clock face represents one hour for the hour hand. Because there are 12 hours shown on the clock, and two circles around the clock is 24 hours or one day. But for the minute hand, each number on the clock face represents five minutes. There are 60 minutes in an hour. So as the minute hand goes around the clock one time, we count by fives. To help with remembering and practicing this, I'm going to show you how to make several clocks that you can make at home. You don't have to make them, but if you can make one or two of them, however many you choose, it'll help you practicing your clock skills. So, first I'm going to show you how to make the kind of clock that's linked in your Verge assignment. It looks like this when it's done. It comes with two circles that you glue together and you can have some hands for your clock. Now, I was making a bunch of different clocks. I accidentally put the hands that didn't come with this clock on here, but that's okay. You can use the hands that come with it or make your own. That's fine. Just remember, the hour hand is the short hand and the minute hand is the long hand. So if you're making your own hands, you need to make them different lengths. So on this clock, you get two circles. You glue them together. You make sure that the 12 and the 0, 0 are lined up when you're gluing them together. And you cut the little splits that it shows you. And you can go around your clock and count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And I just noticed that I started turning my clock sideways. 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and you get all the way back up to the top, and that's 60 and the zero for the next hour. So that's how you make this clock. But it's okay if you can't print it out, because you can make one yourself at home. All you need is a piece or two of paper. If you only have one piece of paper, you're going to start by cutting it in half so that you have two pieces of paper. You're going to put your two pieces of paper nice and straight together and you're going to fold it in half. Now I'm gonna lay it down on my table here so that I can get it nice and straight and flat. It's okay if it's not perfectly straight because we're gonna cut it anyways. But now I have a book. And remember, my two pieces of paper are together so that I get two circles that are the same size. Then I'm gonna fold it in half again. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect but you do want to make sure that you fold it nice and straight, or nice and crisp. Then I'm going to fold it one more time so that I have all of my folded edges. That's this edge and this edge for me, the way I'm holding it. All of them are going to go together by folding this edge up. Kind of like you're rolling it to make an ice cream cone. It's going to look like this. Now, I need my scissors. I'm going to start at the short part, and I'm going to cut not straight across, not straight over here, but kind of with a little bit of a curve to it. But it's okay if you need to just cut straight. It just won't be quite as close to a circle. But I'm going to cut just a little bit of a circle so I get like a pizza slice. And throw my trash away and unfold, and I should have two circles that are the same size. Now we're gonna talk about how to number our circles. And so that you can see better, I have a nice big circle up behind me. We're gonna start at the very top. At the very top of our clock is a 12. So I wrote a 12. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna go at the very bottom, straight across from it. And on yours, 
you have these nice lines, fold lines. So you're going to go straight down to the bottom of that fold line. And you can kind of see my line up here. And write a 6. 12 and 6. Then we're going to look for our fold lines that go across. And we're going to do 9 and 3. 3 and 9. 3 and 9. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. But our fold lines are going to help us. So we have our fold lines and we wrote our 12 and our 6 our three and our nine. Now we have these lines in between. We're not gonna write a number on the line like we did for the 12, the six, the three, and the nine. We're gonna go kind of in between a little bit. So I'm gonna find that line, and you can't really see my line here, but there's a line here. And I'm gonna go just a little bit above it and write my one. And just a little bit below it and write my two. And I'm gonna do it the same way all the way around my clock. So I get this. And you can kind of see on here my line. So my 10's a little below the line, my 11's a little above the line. Same with my 7 and 8, my 4 and 5, my 2. So then I'm going to glue them together. And remember, we're only cutting the top one. And we're going to cut in between the lines to make the little flaps like this. And behind those flaps, you're going to count by fives. Remember, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five. I'm going to hand this stuck. Forty. 45, 50, minute, one more time. 55, and you can put your zero there to start the new hour or the 60 to finish up that. And that is your clock. Now, when you're making your clock out of paper, you're going to use that little bit of paper that I told you to throw away. Don't throw it away quite yet. I forgot. You need that little bit of paper. You're going to use the little bit of extra paper that you have to make your arrows, your hands for your clock. And remember, hour hand, short, minute hand, long. Hour hand, short, minute hand, long. One last kind of clock that I'm going to show you for today is paper plate clock. So, just like we were numbering our clock, we're going to number our paper plate. But we're not going to cut slits out of it. We're going to write on the edges. And on this one, you can see, you can have a little bit of fun when you're making your clock. You don't have to just write all your numbers in black. You can use different colors. On this one, I used the red marker for the hours and the blue marker for the minutes because on all my other clocks my hour hand was red and my minute hand was blue so that'll help me remember that these blue numbers are my minutes and just like when you're making your paper clock you're still gonna need a piece of paper to make your hands and one last thing to tell you I use these little things called a brass brad fastener that once you stick it through you fold it out and it makes it so the hands stay. But if you don't have one of those, you can use a paper clip. I don't know if you can see my paper clip. It's a little bit more tricky, but you can do it. Whatever you have at home, you can use. You can make your own clock. The important thing to remember is that the big numbers tell us the hour. And when we're using our minute hand, each number we count by five for the minutes. So, have fun making your clocks, practice telling time, you can do this, have fun, and know that all of us teachers miss you very much, and we will be so excited the next time we get to see you. Bye, friends.